are more than 100 unique styles of beer, each with their own set of ingredients, process, guidelines, history, and experience. If you're a beer lover, an industry leader, or somewhere in between, a better knowledge of beer style will improve your life and your work. Welcome to A Sense of Beer Style, essential beer style training for those who want to lead in food and beverage. I'm Julia Herz. And I'm Jeremy Storden. We're advanced Cicerones, beer judges, home brewers, and we're excited to guide you through the vast and wonderful world of beer styles. Well, Julia, today we get to talk about a beer style that is kind of hard to find. I've found a few in my time and I've tasted them and I love them, but they're not always easy to find. Today we're talking about cream ale. How'd yeah, you, how'd you do finding your cream ale? Well, I came up short. I am thirsty. <laughs> I did not. I mean, I could have probably spent longer time in the store, maybe found a six pack. It was um, harder than I thought. Yeah. So we, uh, so we do not have a cream ale uh, to show you today, but we can still talk about it because we've had them before and they are lovely. Currently, as of the 2021 guidelines that we're using to reference our uh, style cast information, uh, we still have American Light Lager, American Lager, Cream Ale, and American Wheat Ale still grouped together, partly because they are generally, they're put together for a reason because they're generally mass-produced, light, easy-drinking American beers that that everyone, everyone loves. Cream Ale is, is one of those beers. It was... Um, designed to compete with the uh with the onslaught of loggers that took over the world and um and it really proliferated throughout the 1800s the popularity of cream ale has subsided somewhat but you can you can still find them they're still out there they're just a little bit harder to find um but um but yeah so the, the cream ales were kind of an uh, an answer to the the world domination of lagers and and so cream ales are just a fantastic beer for that reason. Um what do you have to add to that, Julia? I just emphasize that the word ale in in cream is, is as important as the um the part of the the beer name that comes from say a little creamy mouthfeel from mm-hmm. any corn flaked maize ingredients. But ale is a um, top fermenting yeast commonly fermented at warmer temperatures that can actually display low level esters even in this type of style. Um, so that's important to pay attention to. But if you look at the ingredients, besides adding a little sugar to the boil to maybe just be an adjunct and give it some alcohol and um, and frankly lighten the body, it's very similar to our mass produced um, American lagers. Yeah. Um, and in fact, uh, when we think about the the sensory of of light lager, it it should have just a little bit more character, just a little bit more flavor, a little bit more aroma than a standard American lager. Um, and later on, we'll talk about uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, how how they're similar the stylistically uh, with other beers. And one of the beers that often gets um, kind of lumped in this category would be a Kolsch, and we'll talk about that in a different uh, uh, episode. But but it is very much like a Kolsch. It's very much like an American lager, but just a little bit more. Um, and the difference between a Kolsch and this, and I'm jumping ahead, forgive me, but uh, the difference is this is typically going to highlight more American ingredients. And, 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 and we'll see the difference there too. But this one is not always, but also can be kind of a hybrid. You talked about using ale yeast. Um, uh, sometimes they will... Uh, uh, lager that ale yeast or the beer with the ale yeast. And that that's where I find that this beer is very interesting. Yeah. Mix of ale and lager yeast certainly can be used, particularly more of the newer versions, uh, excuse me, um, from craft brewers. Uh, and you, you trigger Jeremy, you know, the characteristic ingredients then um, just like American lager category, American six row barley malt or a combination of six row and two row up to 20% is what makes it unique of maize in the mash, maize being corn, um, mm-hmm. and up to 20% sugar in the boil, uh, which frankly is just uh, food for the yeast to give it a little alcohol that's not going to contribute a lot of flavor. That sugar literally could be white sugar. I'm not hearing people making cream ales with a lot of um, creative style sugar sources. 
this is basically, you know, sugar for fermenting um, and giving the beer alcohol. Variety of hops is not a standard um, choice. Uh, they're not centric on the flavor and aroma for the hops added to this beer. Um, you're going to, you know, have American or continental hops based on the style guidelines. And then back to for the ale yeast, um, not English style ale yeast, which gives you more esters, gives you more complexity. It's more clean American ale yeast commonly, or that light mix of ale and lager beer. And, and so along with that, an expectation of the sensory of this, uh, we'll talk about aroma, um, but keep in mind that this really is, you know, an American version of a Kolsch is a simple way of thinking of it. It's meant to be kind of like that bigger sibling to the American lager. So it's not going to, it, it's not meant to knock your socks off. It's meant to be that lawnmower beer. So when you start looking or when you start, um, looking at it or smelling the aroma and start getting into that, you can expect a low to medium low malt. You can expect that with a little bit of like a sweet corn, light crackery type of flavors. Um, you can get a low to medium low uh, hops, but you can have hops uh, of any type. It could be noble German hops. It could be American hops. Um, there, there are no uh, quote unquote rules here. Um, you can start getting a little bit of fruity esters, particularly because of the ale yeast. But if they have lagered it and cold conditioned it, then those will be somewhat suppressed. But it's going to be more so than American lager. Um, and even we talked about some different flavors that are con considered off flavors. Uh, you can get just a little bit of DMS. But of course, that's coming a lot uh, mostly from the uh, ingredients or particularly the malt coming through that Pilsner malt. But and I'll jump in on my geeky friend, Jeremy, and me. I do it too. Hold me accountable. DMS would stand for dimethyl sulfate. Um, and acronyms are not to be assumed that um, those listening know what any acronym we say, uh, what that means. Yeah. Thank you for, you're always there to save me when I pull out that acronym. And for those of you who are still learning uh, DMS, dimethyl sulfate, you can think of that as like a creamed corn, uh, like a tomato soup type of, um, it's, it's not terribly off-putting, but it it's not, and you can have a little bit of that in some of these beers uh, because it comes out of the Pilsner malt, but, um, but too much of that flavor is not ideal. Right. And when you say Pilsner malt, you'll mean the six or two row barley, and it's an effect of, it's a chemical reaction. Um, certainly it can volatize out. A lot of home brewers suffer mm -hmm. with DMS when they are brewing because they cover the, um, the boil um, of the kettle. Don't cover the, the boil. Cover the kettle boil. during the boil. Um, but what's interesting to note here is DMS is not going to tie in the style to the maize or, um, you know, flaked corn addition, even though the flavor sensory descriptor that Jeremy, Jeremy just described from DMS commonly is um, kind of canned corn flavor. It comes from the malt, not from the ingredient of maize that would be added to this style. And uh, I feel like I may have jumped ahead again just because I I I, I do love the style, but I think we I think we may have jumped over appearance. Did I, did we jump over? You appearance? did jump ahead, Jeremy. I'm it was sorry. throwing just, me off, but you know what? I got so excited. Here's the deal. In in these episodes, Jeremy and I are going to go with overall impression, then appearance, then aroma, then flavor, and so forth. But when you read the beer judge certification um, program style guidelines. They actually go overall impression, aroma, and appearance. So Jeremy was following the style guidelines order. I like going with appearance first because it's what attracts me to the beer first. It starts to help me fire my sensory synapses. Visually, what I see then gets my you know appetite peaked and wet for that you know drinking of the beer. And so appearance to me should be covered first. But no harm, no foul. I'll talk appearance right now. Great. Um, you know, and when you're looking at this beer, again, back to American Lager Strata, um, pale straw to light gold color, very uh, low SRM or standard um, reference uh, method for the color uh, guidelines. The number would be two to five for SRM, and that is very low in color. Um, and five is basically gold. Uh, although, you know, they talk about um, low and medium head retention as well as part of the um, appearance. Uh, that's going to have medium to high carbonation this beer. Fair head retention um, is a good thing. Uh, brilliant, really, really brilliant sparkling clarity. And that effervescence is going to make this what um, it is known for is that refreshing lawnmower beer, quenching your thirst on a hot summer day in the yard. Great. And because now we should talk about aroma, but I just did that. Uh, will you jump into flavor? What kind of flavor can we expect out of a, out of an average cream ale? Oh, okay. And then you please round it out. Um, 
Low to medium hot bitterness is definitely an emphasis. If you're looking at the vital statistics, it's eight international bitterness units to 20. That's actually quite a range. Eight is barely discernible on bitterness units. 20 starts to have a discernible bitterness to most palates for people noticing it, um, but that's called low to medium. Low to moderate multi sweetness. So you don't want a lot of residual sugar. The final gravity of 10006 to 10012 is definitely a broad range. 10006 is going to leave us with a much drier beer than 1012. Um, so you do want to pay attention to, you don't want a lot multi sweetness in this. Um, and, uh, you know, neutral malt, grainy, um, crackery, uh, certainly that two or six row barley style malt that's not as crisp and graham crackery as Pilsner malt might be. Um, a little more neutral and uh, well attenuated is a big emphasis of the flavor, um, meaning it's uh, fermented pretty through and through. Uh, very balanced. The hops really only enough to support the malt and the bitterness, not emphasizing flavor hops. Um, the DMS carries over from the aroma to be allowed in low levels, optional for this style. Um, dry, crisp, clean finish. Um, and the fermentation um, profile back to the yeast can be low fruity esters as optional, but are not prominent, uh, although you might notice they're there. And then, um, you know, very, uh, very subtle flavors, not one flavor I think is dominating in any one aspect in this beer, except for the malt. And that's a pretty neutral um, type of flavor for the malts that you're tasting, uh, as opposed to some more aggressive uh, roasted malts. Yeah. And to kind of carry on with the same theme of imagine this is the bigger sibling to an American lager, um, you're going to get a lot of those similar uh, uh, characters to it, uh, uh, characteristics to it. I mean, the if you were to taste them side by side, then that's where the the difference will really stand out, particularly with the body. Um, uh, it, it's still, even though it does have a more body up to 10, 12 uh, for a final gravity, it, it's still not going to be that big of a beer. You're going to have low to even like medium body at the highest. It's, it's, it is a lawnmower beer. It's meant to be thrown back. It's meant to quench your thirst on a hot day after working out in the yard type of idea. Um, awesome. And Jeremy, take us through mouthfeel, which I would see body as a component of mouthfeel yeah. versus the other way around. And they often get confused. Yeah. But for style guidelines, mouthfeel, take us take us through the entire um, area of sensory on mouthfeel. For, yeah, um, the absolutely. Pre- and so we started talking about body and uh, just a quick reminder, a great way to think of that would be uh, nonfat milk to heavy cream and the, and the continuum in between that. Um, beyond that, you can expect high carbonation to come out of this. It, it is going to be a scrubber. It is going to cleanse your palate and just kind of leave you with that um, clean feeling in your in your palate when you're done. Um, you should expect zero warmth out of this. It is not a strong beer, so if you get any alcohol warmth out of it, then then that's got to be a different beer or someone just put some extra love in it. Um, but it should be smooth. Um, e- even though it's called a cream ale, it's not going to be terribly creamy or fluffy in the mouthfeel. Um, and again, very low astringency as well. It's, it, it's meant to just kind of come, uh, and wash out your palate, refresh you and, and move on. Um, I, I, it's, it's not going to be a terribly memorable beer unless you're paying attention like, like Julie and I, of course have, uh, because it's, you know, it's what we do, but, um, it is one of those refreshing, um, delightful treats on a hot day. Yep. And I'll pick it up on style comparison. Jeremy pretty much covered the bases. It's very similar to a standard American lager, but with more character. Yep. Um, and uh, yet, you know, we haven't talked about Blondale and that will be another um, show episode, but it's a little mm-hmm. lighter in body and smoother and more carbonated back to that carbonation than a Blondale. And then the Kolsch, it is very similar. It is more of just an Americanized version of a German Kolsch, which I still pronounce it as. And so with that, Jeremy, um, let's talk about commercial style examples that are commonly used to calibrate when people want to get to know what this style tastes like. Yeah, the 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 one uh, cream ale that I've got my hands on, uh, of course, was a Genesee cream ale. And that's that's still a with the 20, 2021 guidelines. That's still a, a, a prominent uh, guide for the styles. Um, the other one too, that, uh, that has existed in these style guidelines for a while, and I'm going to destroy the pronunciation of this. So please forgive me, but the Leibot Shiner cream ale, um, I, I'm sure someone could pronounce that better than I can. Um, a, a new one, the Kawanda, uh, pre-prohibition cream ale. I'm not sure uh, where that comes from, if that's, uh, from Pelican or a different brewery. Um, 
but uh, it is I, Pelican. Is it Pelican? Pelican. Um, and, uh, and which that is a, that's a delightful beer. I've had more than one of those in my life. Uh, I can, I can attest, um, uh, little King's cream ale, uh, Sleeman cream ale, sun King, uh, sunlight cream ale. These are all beers that are listed in the guidelines, not because all cream ales should be like them, but just because they, they occupy the bullseye of the guidelines of what a cream ale is. If that, Absolutely. If that makes sense. It, it definitely does. And that's the point of the commercial examples listed in the in the Beer Judge Certification Program guidelines is those are beers day in and day out, year in and year out, that are reliable to calibrate if you really want to know what that style is about. Yeah. Um, taking it to glassware and then taking us home. Um, I would say that the ideal glassware, we we would put this in a pint glass, even though commonly I avoid pint glasses. <laughs> but you're going to see it most often served like an American lager, right? It's going to be served at the same temperatures, classic um, draft systems. Temperatures are 38 degrees Fahrenheit if you're Fahrenheit oriented in the U.S. like us. And you're going to get it in a pint glass. But at least it's in a glass. I'll always feel positive about that. Um, And then I would toss it to you, Jeremy, on what pairing suggestions um, would you say go with cream ale? On pairing suggestions with this, uh, a cream ale, kind of like an American lager. I mean, a a ball game hot dog, a burger at a, at a, uh, summertime party. Um, and, and given my, uh, affinities, you give me that with some fish tacos, then I'll be a happy guy any day. What, what would you pair I like it? it? Well, just you keep it simple, basic, more pedestrian style foods. You're not trying to overcomplicate it. Um, there, there is not going to be a lot of complexity to this beer. That's the point of this style. So you're not looking for very complex food dishes to go with, you know, your common, um, ham sandwich, right. With a little, uh, mozzarella cheese, um, on it would be fine. And so just your everyday lunch style food, I would put it with, it's not as much of a dinner beer to me. Um, dinner beers are going to be more complex dishes to pair with. So that's a good place to start. I, I think it's helpful to remember that this is meant to be light. It's, it has high carbonation. So this is going to be a great palate cleanser and not a beer that you walk around with your pinky sticking out and trying to tell everyone, oh, do you do you smell the the this, that, and the other thing? This is, you know, eat what you want. This is going to clean up your palate when you're done. Right. So there you have pre-mail as part of the standard American beer style category from Beer Judge Certification Program 2021 guidelines. Go forth, conquer, um, study your guidelines, taste your beers, and, and enjoy. Absolutely. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Essence of Beer Style, the essential beer style training for those who want to lead in food and beverage. With advanced Cicerones, me, Julia, and me, Jeremy. Tune into the next episode as we continue exploring the world of beer styles and what to make of them. We encourage you to listen to the prepisodes to build your foundation and better understand beer styles. And before the next episode, I'd like to ask you to review the show and let us know what you'd like featured in upcoming episodes. Until next time, here's to you and your sense of beer style. Thank you for listening. Cheers. Cheers.